things that are in families. Uh, Pam, are you on? Not yet. We'll continue to pray for that. Monica's son, Micah, issues at college. We know so many children that still feel like children to us that are in college. So we just pray for a, a hedge of protection around them and a mind uh, that wants to know Jesus in the midst Amen. of all of that chaos on campuses. Uh, we've got Al's prayer partner with his second, second hip replacement. Uh, and then Brian's fragile health and hip surgery. Uh, so all of those are important things. Do you anyone have something else that they want to mention quickly that we can add? All, all right. Well, we know there's things going on in each of our lives that need prayer. Uh, and so we will just uh, pray for all these unspoken requests as we pray for these as well. Silla? All right. And... Um... And um, I want to ask my friend, Miss Glory, you were on the first, you were first one on this morning. So uh, I'm going to select you this morning to uh, raise our um, prayers up to God and um, pray for our, just um, open us in a word of prayer this morning. Would you do that for us, Miss Francis? Oh, okay. I will. I, I thought you were asking Gloria, but I'll, she can't unmute. So. so you're asking me to pray? Would you? I will, yeah. Thank you. Our God and our Father, we thank you so much for the privilege that we have to gather in this manner. Amen. The Lord, that um, you know our hearts, you know our hearts' desires, you know the things that trouble us. Yeah. Uh, you continue to lift up all these issues with hips and illnesses and those kinds of things, Lord. And so we pray, Lord, most of all for those who need to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, and that we are so living our lives amongst them and with them so that they know that there's reality in having a relationship with Jesus Christ. We also thank you so much for what we will learn in this study this morning as we continue yeah. through our Beatitude study. And we just thank mm -hmm. you and praise you. Use us for your glory's sake. And we'll be yeah. careful to give you the praise and the honor because we ask it in the name of Jesus, even the Christ. Amen. 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 Well, um, my sister Elizabeth, she is probably not on this morning. She might be listening, but uh, she was she we were able to have she, she was able to lead a pilgrimage. This uh she and Ron Potter were able to lead mm -hmm. a pilgrimage this uh past week. We took our board and then other members, uh, people were able to join on this pilgrimage. And if you of course, uh, some of you, uh, uh, some people were able to join us. And so it was just a time to remember. Um, I want to share some of it with you and then have Ron, uh, if he wants to share some of it with you. But this pilgrimage is, it was wonderful. We were able to go through Montgomery, Selma, Birmingham, Jackson, and Mendenhall. And uh, the, this is, we call it an Institute on Wheels. And we are really have committed ourselves to investing in um, the lives of leaders, pastors, uh, Sunday school teachers, groups, and learning about the uh, our history and the past and coming to terms with that. It's a life-changing um, event. And we have um, a dialogue, uh, Bible studies, uh, immersive learning experiences, where that are so um, they're spirit filled, and it's a time where people you can ask those questions. It's a we call it a sankofa because it's, it's a about looking at, at the past, but um, moving forward. We're moving forward, but looking at the past to help us come to terms with our future. And we uh, craft these trips for groups, for whatever group uh, you have. You know, because all groups are not the same. You know, uh, a group from a Presbyterian church might be different from a group from an uh, 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 African Methodist church. Um, or a, a, yeah. right now we're crafting a group for um, a, a teenage um, group from a elite Catholic school in California. So uh, they usually take trips to London, Paris, China, somewhere, but they've decided um, next year they're going to come to, they're going to take a Perkins Justice pilgrimage. 
Can you believe All that? All right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so we're going to craft this book and make it uh, something that they will never forget. And so yeah. we want to, um, and so we, if you have a group, there where their lives need to be um where they want to get this education because they won't get it in books because i thought i knew this stuff because i you know went to school and um and you know thought i knew black history i don't um and so this we went to selma we went to mendenhall with the home of megger evers un understanding the heroes who suffered and died that we don't that most people don't know about and um and learned about Freedom Summer and um, hearing leaders like Ro Rosie and Dolphus hearing their personal stories, and um and and then um, taking time uh, Brian Stevenson you know at the last minute he invites us into his office you know to uh, to meet with us and he took you know more time than he than than he needed to to spend with us and um and so it was just uh, a wonderful time to um to just um, he, to be inspired. And each time we go on these pilgrimage, there's these um, wonderful things that God is doing to, to help, um, to help, you know, bring us along further and further into, um, into a point of reconciliation. And we won't stop until, um, until reconciliation is, is, um, is, 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 is done in America. And so that means we're never going to stop. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, so we're we're gonna continue on, and so um, we invite you to just continue to um, join to continue to join with us and bring others along. Invite friends along. Um, this message is just not for us; it's for everyone. So, Taylor, yes. If you want to know something about Black history, ask Phil Reed. Oh yeah, he 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 know more Black history than anybody. <laughs> that 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 uh, the most the most black folk. So uh, that's yeah. that's how, um you know I, that's what I feel. Reed, I thought I knew black history sitting uh under your tutelage, but then you know I got to you know Brian Stevenson and he told me even that there's so much more out there. It's just a a world of it. Amen. And that uh we all need to know. So I'm thankful yeah. for you, Phil Reed. Yeah, I am too. Phil mm -hmm. was my pastor for 20 years. And he was intentional mm -hmm. about teaching us our own history. And we thank you so much. So, And thank we you. are intentional about passing this on to the next I generation. now will forgive Phil. He's my pastor now. Mm -hmm. Yep. And for many, many years, coming to my mom's house, um, when she became Amen. every Friday, every yeah. Friday, coming in yeah. and preaching to her personally. So, yeah. Ron, do you have anything you want to share about the pilgrimage? It was my uh, uh, transforming experience, uh, I believe, for uh, for the board and uh, for us, the facilitators, and. Um, I can think of no better path to scripture uh, to um, to lay out the contours of this of this pilgrimage that took place just on last week than that marvelous passage from Micah, the sixth chapter, the through the um, through the eighth uh, verses. Um, what does the Lord require of us? He has shown you what is mm -hmm. good. What does the Lord require of you? To act justly, mm -hmm. to love mercy. Yeah. Mercy, mercy. And to walk humbly with your God. Amen. Passage thumbs up. Uh, what happened uh, over the past week. And so let's continue to pray for members of the board as God uh, works in them and through them and among them and challenges us to continue that ministry of justice, yeah. mercy, and humility. 
Amen. And I thank you so much, Ron. Uh, it was wonderful to for you to um to lead and and facilitate this um pilgrimage. It was just wonderful to see you and Elizabeth, and how Elizabeth has grown as a historian in her own right. Uh, That's right. I, uh, yeah. yeah. Her siblings who were on the tour, um, we were just you know mesmerized by our baby sister, you know, who has uh, just <laughs> risen. Right. Um, uh, we we are happy to see from Vietnam, um, Miss Melinda Joy. Yes, <laughs> welcome. We haven't Thank seen you, you. in a while. Thank you. See oh. you, and Chris Cannon. So good to see you this morning. And uh, and I have some more announcements, and one of them is that we are uh, having our luncheon um, on the fourteenth of. Um, 14th of November. Is that, is it the 14th? Is 12th. It the 12th. 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 It, which is Tuesday after the election. Uh, yeah. So, um, and it is going to be at Jackson State University. And we are, it is um, a, uh, it is celebrating the John and Vera Mae Perkins Endowed Scholarship there. Um, and this is so special to us. Um, uh, it is the coming together culmination of so much that is um, sort of unseen because it is this um, endowment was started by um, Pine Lake Church in um, Brandon, Mississippi. And that is where John Perkins was beaten in the Brandon jail. And that was, um, it's so inspiring where, you know, um, that this has begun. And uh, and they in 2022 they became the eighth of the ten Perkins Legacy Schools, and so Jackson State is proud to be a Perkins Legacy School. And we're having this scholarship luncheon. And if you're in town, happen to be in town, um, you can um, RSVP for it at um, uh, on. You can just go to our website or. Call our office. We'll 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 get you we'll get you in there. So, but don't show up without registering or letting us know. And um, if you we are also seeking sponsors for this event. Um, I may have reached out to you already, but if I have not, um, we're we'll be honored to have you as one of our sponsors in this event. And um, you can if you're interested in that at all, um, we would we would be honored to honor you at this event as one of our sponsors. Um, you can email me at the highlighted um, email address or at info at JVMPF, that's easy to remember, or just call our office, ask for Angie. Um, we want to inspire the good and honor the legacy of John and Vera Mae Perkins, so. Sheila. Um, yes. Will I be able to attend the line? You are absolutely gonna be there, of course. How am I gonna get there? We already got it worked out. You never you need to ask me that, Mama. I got oh, you. Okay. <laughs> hey, helping you finish well. That's our that's our commitment. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, any of you want to honor uh, Miss Vera May? Yeah. Then you can do that. Okay. Just let me know you all, and uh, and we will make sure that you are honoring Doctor Vera May Perkins that day. And uh, how, and if you want to do it online, you can go to our website at jvmpf.org/donate, and under the gift designation, you can select in the drop down Perkins Legacy Sponsor. All right, y'all, and um, that is it. We're going to get into our lesson today. Dr. Vander Ark is raring to go, and uh, yeah, I'm ready yeah. here. So. Dr. Vander Ark, we are ready for you. Um, and let me get myself together here. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. I am delighted to be able to talk to you this morning yeah. about Matthew 5, verse 7. It yeah. is one of my favorite words of all time. Yeah. <laughs> Blessed are the merciful, 
for they will be shown mercy. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Priscilla has put together my slides so that they will get everyone's attention. You blame so, it on the card. <laughs> we have a message for doctors. <laughs> After all, if we're going to talk about mercy, we have to talk about doctors. Yeah. So Matthew 5, 9, verses 12 and 13, Jesus says, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Yeah. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, yeah. not sacrifice. So Jesus also has a message for all of the rest of you. James 2, we read, speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. <laughs> mercy triumphs over judgment. <laughs> In the 23rd chapter of Exodus, is all about the laws of justice and mercy. Mm -hmm. So, let's look at mercy. First of all, then, mercy is the heart of God touching our misery. Mm -hmm. Yes, God touches all of us, no matter what's going on in our lives. Mm. Mercy is the fruit of compassion. Mm. Mercy is the showing of kindness towards someone in need. Mm. And Tim Keller has this wonderful thing to say about mercy. Tim says, the only true and enduring motivation for the ministry of mercy is an experience and a grasp of the grace of God. Wow, how beautiful. Okay, let's look at mercy in detail. So we can break mercy down into two parts. First of all, there is the spiritual works. And then secondly, the corporal works. So what are the spiritual works of mercy? To instruct the ignorant, to admonish sinners, to forgive offenses willingly, to counsel the doubtful, to hear wrongs patiently, and to comfort the afflicted. And then the corporal works. Mercy means to feed the hungry to clothe the naked, to visit the sick, to bury the dead, to harbor the lost, and to ransom the captives. Wow, mercy. Psalm 51 verse one. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, 
Mm. Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Mm. Yes, mercy in Latin means price paid. Mercy connotes forgiveness, benevolence, and kindness. And we've already heard these words of Micah 6, verse 8 already today. Ron, would you like to say it again? He has shown you, O oh man, and, and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God? Wow, how beautiful. Okay. Next slide. So mercy is when God, out of his loving kindness, withholds punishment that we rightly deserve because of our sin. Mercy is kind, gentle, or compassionate treatment especially towards someone who is undeserving of it. So mercy is concern for people in need. Yes, mercy makes room for others. Mercy is not just a feeling of sympathy or sadness, but mercy is really getting inside the other person's skin, feeling what they feel, understanding their misery, and then helping them through it. Yes, mercy means helping those who are less fortunate, including those who must deal with disappointment, with disease, and with distress. Yes, mercy fights famine, oppression, natural disasters, family breakdown, disease, mental illness, scarcity of resources, racism, crime, class struggles, and disabilities. Wow. So, in summary, I think we can say about mercy that mercy means helping those who are less fortunate necessity of mercy. You can't be a Christian if you don't have it. So Jesus told us to go sell everything and give to the poor. The motive or dynamic of mercy is do you want to be like Jesus? And the scope of mercy from the story of the Good Samaritan is anybody who is hurting or who is in need. Yes, mercy is a wonderful word. And mercy is an absolutely crucial word for all Christians. You can't be a Christian without it. So, yes, we all want to be like Jesus. So let's show mercy to anyone who is in need today. 
And that's my message about mercy for today. Thank you. So, Dr. Vander, are, are you saying that you can't be a Christian without mercy? That's it. So, you've got to have mercy. <laughs> So when when uh, it said you will know they are Christians by their love. There you go. And mercy. Sure. All right. Well, love what? and mercy. If well, you have love, love, then you have to have mercy too. Yes. Priscilla, I'd like to share a testimony. Okay, who's that? Ron? Go ahead. Ron, yeah. Years ago in the 1980s, a young man from out in the neighborhood went with me. I took a crew of them down to Voice of Calvary, and they heard Phil read Preacher Father's Day sermon that blew them out their seats. And one of them, Marvin, Stout, an adult, he has an older daughter, Kiara. <laughs> and Kiara, very sadly, recently was in an accident. She was driving <clears throat> impaired from drinking. Uh, the car, the other car that she impacted uh, had a driver who apparently was impaired, probably some drug use. And in that other car was a passenger who was killed as a result of the collision. And so Marvin's daughter, Kiara, had recently to go to court for a sentencing. And so there's... It's not clear that she was entirely responsible for the death of that other passenger, but it was a tragedy. And in the courtroom that day uh, for her sentencing, the family of the young woman who had been killed, the other car was in court, and they had a chance to speak. And they told the judge that they did not want Kiara to receive a sentence she could have received 15 years sentence in prison because of her involvement, that they were grieving the death of their daughter, but they also have been able to recognize in Kiara her own compunction and repentance about that. And they asked the judge not to give her the severe uh, sentence, but rather to show mercy. The judge was moved to tears. A young man, not so young now, Marvin, who went there not knowing if he would see his daughter as a free woman over the next 15 years. Uh, if you get Marvin to talk about all he can do is he starts shouting and weeping and says, uh, Rev, tell me that ain't God. Tell me that ain't God. Uh, because, of course, it was God profoundly. And it's the power of mercy uh, on that family's part was healing, it was reconciling, uh, it imparted hope. Uh, I cannot begin to tell you the impact that had on Kiara herself, uh, but mercy is potent stuff. That's beautiful, Ron. I think um, today would be a good day for everyone uh, part of this telecast to talk about how has mercy affected you? Can I say something? Absolutely. Yeah, I, it just hit me, you know, when we said mercy is necessary to be a Christian. And I went and looked, Titus 3, 4 through 7. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Yeah. So without his mercy, there would be no Christianity. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Melinda Joy. Unmute yourself. Yes. Can, can you hear me? Yes. So I was just thinking about the passage that says, merciful and so not merciless and that the fullness of mercy means that we can get empty ourselves when we are going through things in life 
And yet in the midst of that, as we're going through, how do we allow ourselves to be filled back up again with the mercy of Jesus for other people as well? I'll just say this quickly. Being in Vietnam here, I was in a typhoon that we just had. And so in that typhoon was just, you know, a lot of damage and stuff. But it made me think about the people who just was there for each other. And and I feel that even for myself, what I learned, not just in a, in a natural typhoon, but what I learned in my emotional typhoons is that sometimes I don't feel like having mercy. I just want to kind of get on with my own life, if the truth be told. But the Lord is the one, when we go to him, he strengthens us and he fills us up so that we are really merciful. Right. right. Beautiful. That, that's so well said, because when you are um, giving to others, you are emptying yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Take on, on their burden. It's like a seesaw. And when we were on our pilgrimage, we were talking about leveraging your privilege. You are giving yes. yourself away for someone yes. else. And, um, yes. So, and we all have such privilege in America that we don't mm -hmm. so much that mm -hmm. we, we give ourselves away to others, and um, and and now we're seeing that uh, Jesus is commanding us to do so. So, Dave, yes. thanks so much. Thank so, you. This discussion made me think of the three weeks that I just spent in Florida doing relief work for after the hurricane, and that. Um, the, the really the the biggest work we could do is to show mercy and to show compassion and love and we had a, a sign up in the in the headquarters of the red cross that said we are at war our enemy is suffering our weapons are compassion comfort and care and our body armor is humor and um, really that, that, you know, the Red Cross is not a, a Christian organization, but in, in there is a lot of people who come to do acts of mercy and they do it out of a, a inner conviction. And it's a way of letting our light shine without um, wearing it on our sleeve. And it was a privilege to be there. Amen. Mr. Lane. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, as a as a younger person, I uh I had some time in university where I, I majored in two very good Canadian things, um, playing hockey and drinking beer. And one night I, I got myself in a bad spot that landed me in the president of my Christian college's office. I'm wearing that t-shirt today, actually, uh, sweatshirt today. And as I was stumbling to try to explain my actions of the previous night, the uh, the um, the president said to me, hey, Lane, do you think you'd remember if you hadn't been drinking so much? <clears throat> and I was a bit of a smart aleck back in those days. Maybe I still am. And, uh, and I was quiet and I said, um, I think Jesus helped me just say, yes, I think I would remember and he showed me mercy and shocked me by saying, you should probably think about that. You can go. And that, you know, I'd love to tell you that I haven't had any slip up since then. We all know that wouldn't be true, but um, it was a beautiful mercy that I've thought of many, many times. And I met Jesus through that, through that president that day. Beautiful. Uh, I'm, I, I'm sure that we can think of, times that we have been shown some kind of mercy that we did not deserve and it was a turning point in our lives like that thank you i know I, i've had that from my own mother and i know she did, has no idea when that was but <laughs> i didn't Uh, Jody. Uh, good morning again, everybody. Um, uh, this is Mercy's interesting. Despite my weird accent, 
I actually was born in Northern Ireland, um, half Catholic, half Protestant family. And uh, both sides of my family hated the other side, still do, actually. Um, and when I was very young, my father, who was a leading Protestant paramilitary, decided he was going to cut ties with all the organizations he had been friends with. Part of them could mean cut ties with his father, his brothers, his uncles, who are still paramilitaries, many of them still are. And unfortunately, he betrayed his community by telling the police and the army what was going to happen. Um, and because he was the highest ranking Protestant paramilitary in that neighborhood, um, his organization had him killed. And so I grew up in America. And then when I went to university um, and graduate school in Belfast, and a number of years ago, probably about three years now, um, I went for a meeting and I was sitting in a pub with my cousins and someone walked in and uh, I was sitting with my cousins and they looked at me and they said, don't look at that man, which was a dumb thing to say to me because you tell me not to do something, I'm probably going to be tempted to do it or ask why. And uh, I said, she goes, seriously, don't. And why? She wouldn't tell me, she goes, don't, don't, don't go near him. And I, she called me and I actually walked over to the table and the gentleman and, and on the way to the toilet, the man looked at me and he goes, have we met? I said, no. Are you sure? Positive? And uh, he looked at me and he said, um, what's your name? said, so Jody Sargent. And he said, is that your real name? <laughs> yes, yeah, Sargent was my stepfather, but I was actually born here, lived here until I was eight. It was, what was your father's name? And I told him, and he looked at me and he said, you're the spitting image of your father. I said, thank you. He said, your father was a rat and he deserved what he got. And I didn't know what to say. I walked back to the table and my cousin looked at me and she goes, that was the man who killed your father. And he never went to prison because nobody in the community would actually say anything um, because they were scared of revenge. And it was interesting, um, about nine months ago, I got a phone call from his family and they said, would you come? He's dying and he needs to be able to tell you, he said, we, we, we want him to have his conscience clear. He needs to be able to say something to you. And I went and again, he told me that my father had deserved what he got. And he looked and I was, and um, said, my family wants me to ask for forgiveness, but I'm not sorry. And I looked at him and I said, you know, and this is where some of you in this Bible study are gonna get the blame for what I'm about to say. Um, I said, you know, I'm part of a Bible study. And there are so many people in that Bible study who have shown me by their examples their grace and forgiveness and mercy and stories I've heard that you may, you're not asking for my forgiveness. You're not asking for mercy, but so many people have extended mercy to me that I have no choice but then to extend mercy to you. And I don't always remember that lesson, but I always remember it when people talk about mercy and I hear this part um, of this of scripture. So, Dr. Van der Ark, this is five weeks in a row where my toes have been held to the fire. So, next week's Bible study needs to be fun and not challenging and nothing confrontative. Sorry, Jody. The gospel doesn't work that way. It holds our toes <laughs> to the fire. And if you don't want your toes held to the fire, don't read the gospel. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, thank you so much jody for sharing that thank you so much thank you um, we have doug oh thank you um one of the most powerful um uh examples of mercy uh, that i became aware of was told by a missionary who went to latin america and um you know he was he, he was ministering to a tribe down there uh, and and um uh, and there was a a, a judge uh, who who kind of ruled the tribe, and he was 
he was very much feared. Um, and, and you know what happened was that if if you're caught stealing, you you had uh, the the, um, uh, the punishment was you get flogged, and and uh, uh, you know so he was uh, presiding over you know all these criminals and you know and uh, giving them some harsh sentences. Well, found out his son was caught stealing. Okay, and and um, uh, and so his son was brought brought up in front of his fearsome father, you know, who, um, uh, you know, is like, what's going to happen to this, to this kid? The father pronounced sentence. Um, he, he, um, he ordered the, uh, I guess the equivalent of the bailiff, you know, to tie his hands and, and he accepted the flogging on behalf of his son. Um, which is kind of like a, a a forerunner of Jesus, you know, um, you know. So he took the punishment um, that his son deserved, and um, and the missionary was very much moved by that. And and it wasn't long until the you know there was a, a connection to the gospel, and um, uh, you know, and biblically, if if you want to see the most dramatic um, example of mercy as said in the Bible, uh, go to Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35, I think it is. You know, that's that's a pretty powerful story right there. You know, I, I um, just would, would um, encourage all of us to, to read that story if, and reread it if we've read it already. Thank you for let me share so much doug thank you and pamela we pray for your uh nieces this morning so up uh, any update on them first uh coming along better and um my i i meant to ask for prayer for my sister who uh she's was at on a ventilator but she is actually doing much better too uh so so, so thank you for praying and continue to pray for those nieces. Um, gosh, mercy. When I think of mercy, I, I was thinking of, we just, we just celebrated uh, my mom's 90th legacy birthday Saturday. And uh, her birthday was actually on October 15th. It was a surprise for these 10 days. And it was just a wonderful time to um, celebrate life on purpose when it wasn't a funeral. And that, it's, it's so often that's happening so we get together when that when a death but uh that was wonderful but when when i think of mercy i i couldn't help but think about my mom as we as uh there was a proclamation read from the um mayor just honoring her and um and i was asking her when we were putting things together i was like mother like her favorite scripture and um it was john 3 16. <clears throat> Because my mom, she's just um, so merciful, always seeing the kindness in others, regardless of how she's been treated. And I um, mean, being 90, there's been uh, a lot of hurts in that era. And it has been a blessing to me as her daughter, when I think about um, the mercies of God and his goodness to us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for, for me. I'm like this wretch. And before, before I accepted him, I'm thinking the mercies of God. And, and once we receive him, I'm like, Lord, hmm, I can't get past the mercies of God for me. So in the forgiveness he gave to me, uh, the compassion he showed for me, the love he showed for me, how can I not return it? Not perfect, but on purpose uh, for others. And Dr. Vanderhart, you know, the, the fruit of compassion. And, um, and I know for, for me, I, I, I'm an advocate for our children and, um, 
and just showing that love and mercy okay. and compassion. Um, just, and I even think of how God seeing the hurts that done, done to me that I can turn and say, you know, and forgive because God forgave me. So beautiful. That's my mercy story. Wow, that sounds like some wisdom is being passed down, you know. And, and she has uh, wisdom and mercy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you for sharing. And boy, yeah, <laughs> I've been waiting for a long time to share this, but I and I can't tell you it all now. But uh, I think y'all know Pastor Don Coleman of East End Fellowship. Uh, I'd sent it a couple of years ago, and you said, "Yeah, I remember Don, Pastor Don Coleman, and his co-pastor Nathan Walton went to the the CCDA meeting, and my niece, my granddaughter Lainey Moore was part of that, and she's a Perkins Scholar." And she says she's going to try to join y'all this next week. She couldn't do it today. <laughs> she's in her last semester at University of Virginia and going to graduate. But uh, she's very sweet, and I hope she'll join y'all. But my story is, and I won't tell you today, uh, Pastor Dawn said, you need to write that story. I've been writing it for several months uh, trying to edit it and make sense out of it all. But uh, basically I was, my ancestors are from Texas and they were part of the Stephen F. Austin colony uh, where they were given 10,000 acres in the land grants and stuff like that. And, uh, and, they, and my mother passed away at 99 and I, I asked her before she went, did uh, the Hogue, it's the Hogue family, H-O-G-U-E, did the Hogue family ever have enslaved people? And she says, oh, no. Uh, well, if you look up Grimes County, Texas, on Wikipedia, it says you couldn't have a farm of any size that was successful uh, without at least 20 enslaved families or people. I don't know if it, how I said it. And I, so I, I knew that she was wrong. She was the youngest of uh, nine children and probably didn't know the old stories. But anyway, uh, I want to tell that story sometimes because I'm so grateful. And, and my, my ability to have a house and to have the education all goes back to that indebtedness to we have to the uh, people of color, including them indigenous people that were forced to go to Oklahoma from that land. So I just want to tell that story sometime. I'll and, be quiet. Uh, <laughs> and and um and and know that Lane, she's my 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 ace <laughs> buddy at UVA. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. I Great. love her. This this has been a uh, a, a riveting conversation, and these testimonies they, they just mean so much because I know that these are um, life changing moments, you know, aha moments that this just really changes your life. Anyone else hey, having Priscilla? Before we go, can I just, there's another person on here from Rwanda, and I just wanted to um, introduce everyone to my new friend, um, Esther Carabo, who is doing incredible, incredible hey, work in a nonprofit here, working with um, Congolese refugees. So I wanted to make sure that everybody got a chance to say hello, and Esther would say hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, Esther. Hello. Hi, Esther. Hi. Blessings. Hi. So wonderful to have you, Esther. Welcome. It is all fine. It's good to be here. 
Wonderful to have you. Thank you so much for joining. I've been thinking about the, the teaching on mercy and uh, wondering how hard that sometimes can be. Uh, here in Rwanda, we went through a lot of issues, genocide, and you find that your whole family was massacred. You're just alone, like, you know, and someone comes and they need mercy. It's something, it's something that we really need to give, but also it is something that is so hard to give, uh, given the wounds that you have. But uh, uh, with Christianity, with the fact knowing that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, we are able to give the mercy. So it's a very good teaching for me today. And I'm glad that I was able to join the class. Thank you. Wow, what a test. Thank you, Jody. Thank you so much for introducing me. My joy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It means so much to us to hear you say that because um, it's hard for us to fathom, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else? Um, want to share anything we have about we have one more person anyone else if not we are going to close in a word of prayer and um, get on with our week y'all and, uh, and I know that we have a lot of love and mercy that we can share because we want people to know that we are Christians by the love and mercy we show for one another. Uh, Priscilla, I have a quick question for you. Uh, yes. What is the criteria for a, um, a college to become a Perkins a legacy and not number one? And number two, are you looking for more colleges to, to, to become a, a, a legacy? Yeah. Um, well, we, we do have criteria and I'll be um, happy to share that with you because there's a, a a, a list of things um, that we have for our colleges and we're trying to um, uh, we coordinate coordinate that with um, with colleges so um, I'd love to share that with you and um, it, Sim, you got my email address uh, it's Priscilla dot Perkins yeah and uh, I'll share we have like a little uh, uh, pamphlet type of thing um, for our is, legacy yeah, school I'd love to read it yes I'll, I'll send it to you. All right. Thank you for that. Thank okay. you, Priscilla. All right. I sorry. thought you were going to say sponsor. That's my job all day. <laughs> I'll be praying for that, too. Yeah. Be praying for that. Because uh, we, we we have to keep this this ship going. And it, it's becoming, it. Um, my dad says, always have a vision that's bigger than yourself. And it is. Um, and it's taking on a life of its own. And um, but God is has has always been um, the uh, the wind in the sail, and so He will make sure that um, He takes care of it. It's His, and um, not mine. So I know that He will take care of it. And uh, so we're so um, thankful that you all have joined us this morning. And um, we're going to close in a word of prayer. And I'm going to ask my friend Margie. I see you're sideways, got your camera sideways. You're here with us. You're recovering from um, your hip surgery. We're so happy to have you unmute yourself because I want you to close us in a word of prayer this morning. Uh, Margie Wright up there um, in Washington, D.C. Can you unmute yourself because I can't hear you at all. Uh, uh I see you trying. Um, can you? Let's see. Still muted, Margie. I can, oh, wait. She's not able to do it, so I might be able to um, to uh, ask Melinda, who is sitting right next to her. Let's get some prayers from Vietnam to uh, close this out in a word of prayer this morning. Uncle Amen. Uncle. Yes. So, Father, we are, um, first of all, we are beyond humbled 
that sometimes we know mercy and justice sit right next to each other. And so we do understand, all of us on here, that there's times when we did we not, did not get, get We did we not did get, not get what was due us. us. So, Father, we just thank you for our Bible study. We thank you, Father, for us being together. We thank you for having mercy, having mercy on us emotionally, having mercy on us spiritually. We thank you for having mercy on our families, on our nation, on our neighborhoods. And God, we just ask you that uh, you said bless. And bless means to suffer, to be happy. And so Lord, in the midst of all this going on in our lives, we ask you for a mercy that can only come from you. It can't come from us just reading about it. It can't come from someone just telling us about it. We sit in the mercy that you have already given us. And we don't just sit in it. We lean into it, especially the times when we need it the most. So we just thank you. We pray blessings over everyone, whether they're here on this call, Bible study, or they will be listening later. Because the mercy of you triumphs over everything else in our lives. And so we bless you and we thank you. In your son Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you guys next week, Tuesday, November 5th. And um, make sure you go out and vote um, after, Bi after Bible study. All right? Uh, amen. And we'll Wait, see you aren't, again. Aren't you forgetting to tell us something or ask us a question? Isn't there a question? The that you always ask us every week is the love you give away. Give away. That is so, so right. And uh show some mercy every day. If you're if Bye. you whenever you can. God bless you. Thank you. Bless Bye, you guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.